<laughs> this is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value, and a new experience. Welcome to the Geese Spot Podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love sound bites. Join us for conversations around sex, spirit, and all things self-care. All things self-care. All things self-care. This is a journey into sound. One, two, three, four. You are a G Spot podcast with Katie Silcox. Hey, everybody! This is brought to you by one of my favorite Ayurveda products, Ahara Ghee. It's the ghee that I personally use in my own kitchen. And it's the one that I fully stand behind. I personally know the owners, and I can assure you that this ghee is always cultured and truly grass-fed with third-party verification. And what I most love is that they make this ghee in small batches in the traditional Ayurvedic way. That means from cultured cream and slow-churned, sourced from small family farms and pastured year-round. As if that weren't enough... This is the first ghee company in the world to be animal welfare certified by a greener world. This is the ghee to buy, you guys. And we'll make sure you get those links in the show notes where you can go head over to Ahara Ghee. So uh, welcome, everyone. I'm Katie Silcox, and I'm just, you know, as per usual, um, truly, madly, deeply in love with these teachings. And uh, not only am I the advertiser for them, I'm a user myself, as they say, Um, and need them, need them every single day of my life. And today um, is a topic that, you know, I was speaking with my staff about just what are we going to do for the new year and what's the vibe? And, you know, we often focus so much on, on themes that will be relevant to the time and the season, but for today, it really just felt appropriate for this particular group of people who is here today and who tends to be attracted to our school to, Um, really start to experientially engage with uh, an energetic that enables us to start to be the receivers. So before we dive into that, I just want to say that today I'm going to lecture a little bit, but a lot of what today is going to be is about experiencing something. And so all of us, I I can't say what that with 100% certainty, but I can feel that most of us were raised in a culture and a scholastic system that really encourages us to consume as much information as possible. Oftentimes to memorize that information, maybe remember it, maybe even not remember it, right? And so much of what we do at Shakti School is about we need that, right? We need the logical part, that analytical part of our mind. We need language, right? In order, we one could argue we don't, but yet language is really useful for me to sit here in front of you and convey an idea. Now, perhaps there will come a time, and I am totally here for it, when we don't need language, right? And we can just, we, we communicate in another way. But for now, language is a very useful tool but we begin to get confused when we confuse information and the consumption of information with knowledge and with the actual thing that I think you guys are here for, which is the inner revolution, right? You are here because you hope to gain something that's going to transform something in you, that's going to shift something in you so that you can actually be more of who you really are and less of the things that maybe you picked up like a little backpack (laughs) on your way through this journey called life or as in Shakti school, lifetimes. So welcome, welcome everyone to the experience. 
and maybe even do the daring acts of putting down your notebook and pen, closing all the other windows, turning off your phone, and sitting back if you are that kind of person that likes to vigorously take notes the good thing is this will be recorded but to actually just let yourself soak like this this dried out bag of tea that is so ready to be dipped into some beautiful boiling water <laughs> Steph is getting it right just let yourself soak. I mean, that's really what today is about. So welcome, welcome, everyone. This is the Shakti School. I am your guide. I am the founder, Katie Silcox. So loved and honored to be here with you guys today. Just completely blessed to be in this space with you guys on what I feel truly is a transitional point in the story of humans. It's not the first, but it is one of many where we are being invited into 2021 to learn new ways of being, new ways of perceiving, and new ways of experiencing life. Today, we are going to have a tiny taste of what we do every single week in Shakti School. And I see some of our gals are here today, and some of you are new, and you've never been a part of this, and you're kind of curious about what's going on. And so today's going to be a little taste of that. So the topic for today, the art, the science of being able to deeply prime your system to be a receiver. Now, why isn't this called the class? You know, I don't think a class would do very well. Can you guys imagine if you were like, okay, free webinar with Katie Silcox, primarily marketed to women, and it's called the art of learning how to give more. <laughs> Women would be like, no. <laughs> like, you guys, we, we get it. Like, and I know we have some men in the room and that's totally fine. But in general, what we are working to slowly, laya yoga, right? The word laya means to dissolve. We are learning how to dissolve old patterns, the ones that are unhelpful, so as to embody a fuller version of who we actually are. So because this capacity to give and overgive, and one could even argue it's not a pure form of giving, it's giving from a nervous system that's been primed to get its sense of safety and value and worthiness in how much we can output. Now that might, might, might not be your experience and that's totally fine. Just as all individuals have their unique lived experience, we also can find these sort of themes and collective wound patterns that run through societies and cultures and times, right? And so one of the, the, the serpentine wounds of our time that you as a spirit woman, a spirit man, a spirit being are being asked to rewire is this constant mode of output. Do, 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 do. What feminine form spirituality asks us to learn, and it is not easy, and it's sometimes actually quite painful, is to rest and learn how to take it in. And if we didn't grow up that way, being held in the arms of, a, of an unconditionally loving caregiver on a large scale, if we didn't always get that perfectly, which by the way is none of us because our parents had their parents, et cetera, et cetera. What we often do is create nervous system patterns that enable our system to survive. We also are the carriers of old belief systems, and this can ride the wave of physiology, our nervous system patterns, our biology, the diseases that we inherit, the thought forms that we inherit. Now modern science is getting on board with what Ayurveda and yoga and many, many, many indigenous, traditional, medicinal life 
systems have said for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And that is you inherit your lineages, undigested patterns. So if your mama was a giver and you sat around as a little girl watching her give, the likelihood that you're going to maybe embody some of that is really high. Or maybe you saw her doing that and you were like, I'll never be like her. And then you downloaded this whole new operating system, which, by the way, leads you back to how she was. It's like the great cosmic joke. I'll never date a man like my father. <laughs> And then 20 years down the road, you go, how did I marry my father? I thought you were totally different. <laughs> okay, guys. So this stuff can't be done cognitively. And I know this group of 188 people here are a smart group of people, a self-aware group of people. But this work, the work of the Divine Mother, and it brings tears of great relief to me has to be done through the body. And it requires an inordinate amount of trust because as you begin to enter into this receiving mode, the water of love and unconditional presence and energy and nature and all these things that happen when we open to receive start to pour into a system that has largely been designed to output. And as that water begins to flow through all of your many bodies, all of the ways in which that unconditional love was not our experience and all those stored feelings and memories start to come to the surface to say, feel me, love me, know me. And you may have old memories and you may have old sensations and old feelings and you may not. But we avoid this like the plague. <laughs> And so it's so much easier to stay in doing mode and output mode than in receptive mode. And it's totally counterintuitive. Everything in our culture says, give, 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 but you're not really giving because it's coming from this place of compensation. As if the very existence and nature and innocence of who you are isn't enough already. So the art and science of receiving is the path of the least selfish one. It's the path of the most deepest giver of all time. Because as you begin to say that I am willing to receive, what you're actually saying is that I put my faith in the fact that there is something inside of me that has got my mother effing back, no matter what. I, I, I put my faith in that. I'm going to get so soft and so receptive that I open myself into something that is bigger than me. And I trust it. And I trust it in a world that has given me absolutely no, no reason to trust anything. <laughs> I see Natalie lighting up and Janet and Alexis because y'all know what I'm talking about. And now here's why it's even more radical now, because we live in a time that is very different than the time that your grandma and granddaddy and your mommy and daddy lived in. It's a totally different time because shit was bad back then, but at least there was the illusion of structure and safety. Right. Like I talked to my mom and she's like, I just couldn't believe it when I found out all this stuff about politicians. I met George Bush's wife in a pottery barn and she was really nice. You know, this idea that our politicians are going to save us, that our religious institutions are going to save us, that academia is going to save us, that the medical institution is going to save us. It's slowly starting to fall away and we're beginning to feel more vulnerable than ever. And by the way, Bunny Silcox, which is my nickname, I love aspects of the Western medical system and religious institutions. And I'm such a lover of political science. It's not to say these things are bad. It's saying that there is a force on our planet right now for so many reasons that 
we don't need to get into now that is asking us to be able to place our attention and faith in something outside of those structures that our forefathers and mothers easily were able to lean into. And some of us more than others. Right. Today, I'm going to teach you guys and, you know, you got to practice it. This isn't going to happen overnight, although you can have a miraculous experience today, but it's day to day to day, just like you have to get up every day and, you know, eat healthy. You have to get up every day and, and remember this and, and, and enter into the experience of this. So I'm going to give you some practices and do them with you in a moment. Um, but it's not something you can really do with the mind or will yourself into it. That's a part of it. But really, it's about feeling safe enough and trusting enough to be able to lean back into something else. When we talk about the nervous system, we, we talk about the nervous system a lot in Shakti school. It's really the um, central premise of all healing in Ayurveda and also in modern trauma release theory. So I lean into those two ancient and modern disciplines really strongly and I've studied both of them at length. And what we find in both of those systems is that in order to rewire this state of being constantly in giving mode or output mode or doing mode or hypervigilance, another way of saying it is anxieties, right? Or even depression. These are all ways in which we've actually left ourselves that the nervous system actually has to be retrained and rewired. It's not as easy as writing an affirmation or sticky note and putting it on your bathroom wall and saying, universe today, I'm open to receiving everything. It's all for me. God bless you for my new puppy, my new boyfriend, my new bank account and all the things, right? It, it, that's why affirmations don't really work. <laughs> it's like if you've got an unconscious nervous system that's running on hypervigilance and hyper doing and never ceasing and never stopping and overthinking, then that system actually has to be interfaced with. And we, and, and we say hello to it, but really we give it another place to travel. So that other place to travel that's almost like the opposite of what we've been doing is where we're going to travel together today as a group. And now we're up to 200 people. So there's going to be a great Shakti in this. So often, as I said, we're working with original, what are called original love signatures, where the way we get our safety and the way we get our you know, love is through this overgiving. This is especially true historically if you have been a woman. So the lineage of womankind, now not always, right? But for many hundreds of years has been that we get our safety and security by being solely providers of something for others. You're providing, and that's a part of our lineage. It's not the whole story, but it's one negative nervous system pattern that actually takes advantage of the divine feminine in many who identify as women. And it's of course in other genders. So we don't need to make this a gender conversation. It's in all beings, this capacity to mother. The energetics of mothering. Right. And what does that mean? Biologically, you are giving birth to the baby and the baby comes to your breast and biologically milk begins to flow through your body. You're the original feeder of humanity as a woman. And so that natural life force in Ayurveda, if misused or taken advantage of, becomes the overgiving in the nervous system that can flow through any of us, man, woman, anything in between. Okay, guys. And so I, and I just want to say, I've actually known several, several, many actually men in my life who, um, for whatever reason, really downloaded that feminine nervous system uh, and who are 
over givers. So it's, this has nothing to do with man and woman, but I will say that what the pattern that we work with of unraveling this is largely seen in women. Why does that matter? Because we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. This innate ability to give is the feminine superpower. This is beautiful. But if it's not coming from unconditional love, it's going to hold karma is what the teachings say. So unconditional love doesn't burn out. I know. You know, think about Mother Teresa. It's not to say Mother Teresa didn't get tired or Gandhi or these Martin Luther King, right? Such a giving being. But they were fueling themselves on something bigger. And you don't have to do much research to find out, okay? These beings were deeply spiritual creatures. Different traditions, same energetics. Oh, great father sky, says all indigenous traditions across the whole globe. Oh, great masculine principle, big daddy, heat, output, solar energy, fill me up. Call it God, call it presence, consciousness, Shiva, call it what you want. Oh, great father sky, fill me up. Oh, great mother below me, you who always provide for the birds of the sky and the beasts of the field, you who always rain down upon us, you who are constantly in this generative mode, reach me from below. So there's this need in order to become a mistress of magnetism, which you see this all over the internet, how to manifest and how to magnetize your soulmate and money and your dream career. They're all, I shouldn't say they're all, many are missing the most important thing. And that is that we need to have a relationship to the matrix that is bigger than the individuality of self. And it is into that matrix in which you lay back. Without that, who's going to give to you? You, you? you signed up for this workshop. You said, I want to receive. You put in your email. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> January 2nd, my hangover will be done by then. Cool, right? I'll be so ready for the change, right? But like, you are ready to receive. But my question to you today is, who is giving to you? Who? And that deep, big existential question that I just asked you is the most important question you could ever ask yourself in this lifetime. You know, I read a quote about it on the podcast from Rumi. There's one thing you're here to do. That one thing is to know the divine that lives in your heart and it lives on the outside of you as well. And to begin to have such a deep relationship with that. And that is the thing that is going to fill you up. Like my mom always said, ain't no man going to feel you like Jesus do, right? And like Jesus might not be your bag and that's cool. Like it can be anything, right? But the point is you need to figure out what it is that fills you that is bigger than you. What words work to melt your little girl's heart? What words melt you into being so willing to receive that which is always readily available for you? Tantric tradition says, Bindu Visarga, it's dropping down into you like drops from heaven. God ready to take a thousand steps towards you running, but is waiting on you to take that first baby step towards her. So what are we, who are we receiving from? This is a great endeavor, my sweet friends. Um, it's a project, it's a life project. It's bigger than a New Year's workshop, free workshop from the internet. You know, It's really the endeavor of being a spirit mama, a human who wants to know 
who am I beyond my family that I grew up in, beyond the color of my hair, my age, my sex, my race? Who am I? And who am I when this body decides that it's time for a new one? Right? Who am I? Who am I? The teachings of Ayurveda say there is a, a force that holds us that um, has a number of different levels we could talk about. And we do a whole big discussion on this in Ayurveda school, but it's called Ojas. And Ojas is this grand, plump, juicy, think about a cell, fat cell membrane, right? Maybe go back to high school biology. And that cell membrane is soft and squishy, but it's strong. and It knows what to let in and what to keep out. And on an immuno immunological level, this is a healthy immune system. Virus, bacteria comes in and quickly the cellular structures know what to push out. And food and love and nutrients come in and, and it knows take that in, right? And stuff goes wrong when that process gets off. So around the individual self of me and you, we also have this field of ojas, this containment. And it holds us and it can feel when something's coming in that's harmful for the highest in the system. And it can kind of push that out and it can feel what's nurturing and what's going to elevate and what's going to expand and, and generate and help things grow. And guess what? It's okay if something bad gets in because then the system gets to get stronger. So it's not that nothing bad ever gets in and you're just like this spiritual person that's like, oh, I don't like any energies other than, you know, it's not that. It's that you begin to get better at being able to take in nourishment and keep out that which is not nourishing so that when inevitably the stresses of modern life hit us, you will be better prepared to handle it. That's why we talk about meditating and praying now when things are good, <laughs> not that they're great, right? So that when shit hits the fan, like you've got the ojas, you've got that resiliency. And I mean, I wrote a book about this. Many of you guys have it, but I brought it because I never promo my book, but I was like, there's actually a really good book about this. I should mention called healthy, happy, sexy. And it really is the practical stuff about how to build your ojas. We're not doing that today, but you should have this book. But what we're going to do today is talk about what the ancient teachings say is the number one way to build the ojas, the mother field. Number one way. Well, I'll have to say it's actually like two things in one. Avoid the things that disturb your mind. And let your mind go to the things that nurture you and fill you. So did you get that twofold? Like avoid the things that disturb your mind because all that stuff's going to come for you. you no, know, and nobody going to get away from disturbance. So don't seek out more disturbance than you need because that's coming for all of us, disturbance. So do that. And then the other thing is, Allow yourself to receive the beauty that is already here in your life. Okay, let me give you a, just an example of the way I am learning how to do this. And then we're going to stop talking and actually do it together. There's so many, but I used to teach a lot and all over the world and I would fly everywhere and be very, very exhausted from all of that travel and teaching. And that exhaustion was ameliorated, well, when I stopped getting on airplanes as much, but also when I learned that when students came up to me at the end of class and they said, hey, that was really amazing, that I had to actually learn how to let that in. Or when they came up and said, you said this and that really changed my life forever. I had to really learn how to, as a meditation, let that in. 
how often does someone tell you that you look beautiful or I like your outfit or whatever myriad of compliments? And what's the first thing so many of us do when someone says you're beautiful? So often our first reaction is to negate it or to go, oh, thanks. I really like your shoes too. Immediately to deflect back, right? There's this, and I, we could do a whole three hour lecture on like the nuances and intricacies of this and why we do it. But my theory is that because our society has so for so long dishonored the feminine, this is just one symptom of it because the feminine guys is the great receiver. As women, we have a womb. The feminine is the womb. Now, do other beings on the planet have the feminine called men? Sure, but male beings don't have wombs. And that energy vortex is job. One of its jobs on the biological level is to receive the male principle. Now, you may be like, but I'm a, I'm a lesbian. What are you talking about? That does not pertain to me. Yes, it does. <laughs> By the way, one of our teachers at Shakti School is a beautiful lesbian woman who can teach you all about how this exists for lesbians as well. The point is this energy sphere, whether you make a baby with it or you build a movement, is a creative vortex that has the capacity not only to birth things, but to absorb and we teach this in Shakti school. It's a whole secret teaching I'm dying to get into right now with all of you because your smiles are really turning me on as a teacher, right? But like the womb absorbs. And the ancient people knew this. And that's why you went to the red tent. It wasn't because you were dirty and bad when you were menstruating. It's because that organ absorbs the pain of the tribe. And we put you in a red tent so we could care for you. And the older women would bring you food and the younger women would bring you food. And I'm covered in chill bumps because you were pulling in and receiving the pain. And guess what else? The wisdom. So when they said these women are crazy, don't let them touch the food. No, no, no. It's that they were channeling this mother energy this receptivity. When we have sex in a heterosexual relationship, the male organ enters the female body. It's a receiving, it's a great act of trust. If you're not in a cisgendered relationship, one of you is going to pol polarize into that role of the masculine and feminine and you can dance that dance on the energetic level. My point is, the feminine is the receptivity. And because that's been denied for so long, we are in hyper vigilant mode. We are in hyper activity. We are in hyper doing. We overbook our calendars and we never stop in our minds because this is how we have been falsely taught. So the next time someone says, you look beautiful today, as a sacred act of tuning to God herself, you say, yes, aren't I amazing? I'm taking that in. Yes, I am beautiful. Yes, I am a good teacher. Yes, I am a good mother. Yes, I am a good love. Whatever the compliment is, you let it penetrate you as you would a trusted lover. Now, I use these examples of sex because it keeps you interested. <laughs> but you don't have to take it to that level at all because I am personally right now a, a, a wonderfully single person and I have never been more in the field of this sensual and sexual relationship with divinity than now. So if you're like, well, I'm single, does this? Yes, even sometimes more so. Because we're speaking about your ability to receive not only from the outside world, which will happen more and more, 
but your ability to actually have an intimacy with divinity giving to you. And then you give back. Okay. So this is all about divine giving and divine receiving because most of us have been taught to be more givers than receivers. We've atrophied our ability to receive. And that's why we have to practice that a little bit more than the other. I want to talk about this for five hours, but I'm going to stop and just invite you to come into the experience with me if that feels okay to you guys. And if you're like, what the hell? I love this. I want to know all of these things and so much more. You just have to join Ayurveda school. It is amazing. Uh, I love it more than anything in the world, but it's my baby along with several other midwives. And there are some women in the room right now that can attest to how uh, life-changing Shakti school is. And um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to convince anybody to join, but I just know with every fiber in my being, if you do show up and you do agree to, to show up, um, your life will never be the same and the people around you's life will be forever shifted. Um, so please join us. We start in two weeks, January 13th and Omri is on the call and she's going to actually hop on after I finish and we finish the practice. So if you are like, Oh, I have a bunch of questions, then, uh, you can hang out and Omri will talk to you guys and answer all your questions. But for now, write those down, put them to the side. We're going to go somewhere else together. And, and this really is the most important thing we do. So I invite you to turn off all the things. And if you want to lay down, lean back, uh, get cozy and comfortable, be in a position that you think you would be comfortable in for maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes max. And we're going to go, go to a different place that speaks a different language. Now, here at Shakti School, we love the mind. We do not call it a naughty monkey or a bad ego. You just have a part of you that's a thinking mind. And, and just like all forms of sacred nature, your thoughts and your mind are God-given. God-given. Your mind moving is doing what it's meant to do, just as a dog barking or a fish breathing through these gills. It's just natural nature for mind to move. And closing your eyes if you'd like. Just go ahead and remember that the mind will be like the wind. It will go on roller coaster rides and rants and fears and fantasies and you just... That's just a part of me, like I have a heart or a small intestine or a liver. I've got these thinking mind. And now before we enter into the deep practice, I want you to connect to the matrix of support, this mother, father, the ancients called it this yin and yang, this God, goddess, this consciousness and energy, whatever works for you as you begin to soften your body and relax your body, we invoke an alternate path. We cannot learn how to receive until we move out of the old nervous system pattern by interfacing with another field of experience. Sensing all around you this matrix of support, maybe that there's just a myriad ways of getting there. And so maybe it's remembering a particular moment in your life where you felt very connected to divinity placing a small smile on your face and recalling a memory of sweetness. It might be a moment with a child or an elder 
a moment with a pet or a moment in nature, a moment with a friend, that can be a portal into sacred presence. You may have a God or a goddess that you actively work with. I mentioned I work with the energetics of Christ. And you may work with Tara, Kali, Durga. Whatever works is one of the definitions of Tantra. Whatever gets you softening into the place of love and quiet. And since in the matrix of support, perhaps there are some people in your life, they can be women, they don't necessarily have to be, but who's mothering you? I think about my mentor, my um, acupuncturist, my best friends that are also doctors and healer women. I think about the women who run a place called Well Room in Charlottesville and she's a nurse and just being in that energy of a nurse, the kindness. So I've given you a few examples. Let's take about a minute more and just call in your angels. Feel yourself held in this matrix that is not the one we typically live in in our day-to-day -day life. This is the matrix that can, as the teachings say, it is infinitely giving. It is infinitely giving. A long line, a lineage of love. And as you make contact with it, you may leave it and think about things you're worried about or any number of thoughts. Just notice that and come back to this matrix of support. Notice how you feel. How does your body feel when you are connected to that field of support? Good. Now we're going to move into this next part of the practice. And I want to, I want you to let intuition be a, a bit of a guide here and try not to doubt it and trust it. So I want you to just pick which leg you're going to receive energy from the left or the right. And usually it'll just immediately pop into your mind and just don't doubt that. So which leg am I going to receive energy from? Good. And then we're going to let our awareness drop down to the soles of our feet. This can be done anytime, any place. You can be laying in bed, seated in meditation, standing out in nature. You can be standing in line at the grocery store, seeing, sitting in your car, sitting at work. You now have this sacred teaching and you can use it always and at any time. It is a very safe practice. It is a practice for receiving unconditional love from this great mother force. So whatever leg you chose, feel that that energy of the sole of the foot, energy can be drawn from the earth. And it's not that you are drawing it in. It's more you're allowing, you're softening the sole of your foot. You're sensitizing that soft underbelly of the foot. You're saying with the foot, I am willing to take in that which is eternally available and giving. 
and you don't have to feel bad about taking from the earth. This is an, an in, infinitely renewable resource. She longs to be wanted by you. Feel that energy, that light, whatever comes through. As you soften that underbelly of the foot, feel that move up your leg. And feel it collecting in the belly, holding it there for maybe two or three counts. And then moving energy of focus, light, whatever's there, down through the opposite leg. And it pours back into the earth and it makes a circuit. Down it goes and then back up into you. So I'm gonna do the right leg. I'm gonna go up the right on the inhale. Pause the breath in for a count or two or three without any stress. And then as I breathe out, I'm breathing out down the left leg. It circuits down into the earth, circling down and comes up through the right. So that's if you're doing the right leg. If you're doing the left leg, it's gonna be exactly the opposite, up the left, pause at the belly, two or three counts, and down through the right. Okay, guys, super simple. You're not going to try to breathe deeply. You're simply allowing the breath to happen. And if you want to do this without the breath, that's also totally fine. So we're gonna be in this for the next few minutes, finding that energetic, soft underbelly of the foot, Pausing, letting the energy collect at the belly and moving it down the left leg and finding that circuit. And as you do this, you can add in this bhavana, this, this emotive sentiment. And that, that is, this is for me. This is just for me. I'm open to receiving divine feminine mother love. This is just for me, for me, for me. As you're doing this divine receiving, remember it's like pouring clear turquoise water into like a little bit of an ink well. It's not that the ink well is bad, but you may have old thoughts, old memories, emotion. Just let that be there, but you come back to the circuitry of receiving this water wheel of her endless fountain of love. And over time, I want you to think about doing less, trying very, very little. You don't have to work hard for this, and that might be a new idea for some of you. Your job is to just continually and softly channel your focus. All the receiving is going to be so effortless. So try a little less. Continue to just gently channel your attention. And over time, what will begin to happen is that that circle of light, that circle of energy, that circle of receiving this incredibly potent feminine life force energy, it's going to start to take over and it's gonna kind of feel like it's happening on its own. 
and that's how you know you have entered her field. And if you're new to this, no problem. Just continue to do the exercise and eventually it is definitely going to happen because you are a child of this world. Sense that in your system, rather than output, you flipped a switch and you're now operating on input. Something is coming into me. I am open to being fed. Shower me. Fill me. Pour into me. Give to me. You are like a magnet or like a, a cup, like a holy grail, if you will, being filled. Your job for the next few minutes as this force you soften more and more and more and you get more and more full. Your job now is to grow your cup. In other words, to let your nervous system get more and more comfortable with being flooded or filled with goodness and pleasure because our nervous systems are often primed for pain and trauma and that's a part of life but now we're teaching our system to be able to withstand unconditional love and the beauty and grandeur of that light I'm going to do just a few more minutes remembering up one leg, pausing, down the other. And there may come a moment when there's just a lot of light and energy and love and you just don't need the tool anymore. And you can just rest in that light. And if you lose your way and start to go into thoughts again, come back to the practice of using the tool.
Okay, so when you feel full, keep that fullness and just gently start to let your eyes open a little bit. And I'm gonna end this by introducing another small element to the receiving practice, which is let your gaze look around the room and really take in the things that are here, that are your, also your friends, right? Your friends, the plants and the couch and the pillow and computer and all the things that we forget to thank and be with. Take in the beauty of the light and the colors in the room. And this is for me, for me, for me. I get to take this, take this in. So our mantra is, as we finish this time together, this can be for me. This is just for me. And that might be in your bathtub. It might be when you're in Shakti school. It might be in your meditation. It might be when you're giving yourself a massage or just spending the afternoon outside looking at the trees. But this is just for me. is the mantra of her. I am open to receiving this divine love, heavens above, earth below. I'm open to taking in through the gateways of my five senses given to me by the divine, the pleasures of this life, the tastes, the touches, the sights and smells and sounds, I start to make those the object of something holy. And as I do that, while I may love going into a temple or a church, my very walk on this planet becomes the sacred walk, the everyday beauty. So I am soaking myself in this love and I am so grateful that we got to join together at 2 p.m. Eastern <laughs> to go on a journey somewhere else. And yet a journey that brings us so much more here. Um, I feel super called in 2021 to be an emissary of love and light. Um, and thank you guys for your focus and for being here and, and giving us your time and your attention. I hope you were able to receive. So I'm signing off. I'm sending you lots of love. <laughs>